and welcome to the Moonshots Podcast. It's episode 212. I'm your co-host, Mike Parsons, and as always, I'm joined by Mark Pearson Freeland. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Mike, and good morning, listeners and subscribers. We are kicking off this brand new year with a brand new book, aren't we, Mike? Brand new. Uh, Mark, you are underselling. This is the biggest way I could think of starting a new year for our show is going to one of our all-time most popular experts, gurus, and inspirators, and they have a new book, don't they? That's right, everybody. We are digging back into the man, the myth, the legend, David Goggins and his brand new book, Never Finished, Unshackle Your Mind and Win the War Within. And Mike, as as described on many of the online sites, this is not a self-help book. It is a wake-up call. And I think the title of Never Finished, as we will discover on today's show, is perfect. Perfect coming from a man who has proven again and again that he just won't quit. Right. Uh, You you know, the title never finished. Brand new, David Goggin, straight to number one. It is huge, not only in the bookstores, but also for us as people, you, me, and all of our listeners, Mark, who are trying to be the best version of themselves, trying to be 1% better every day. This book takes on a whole new if you will, stage of thinking from David Goggin. So it's super fascinating to see. It's a more philosophical, more reflective, more strategic idea of never being finished. And it again starts with some really powerful stories that just wake us up. I mean, it is like a big ice bath reading a book like this. I am thoroughly, thoroughly excited to my bones to be able to break down a new book from David Goggins. And what I'm delighted to tell you, Mark, and all of our listeners is it contains some new thinking, some new practices and habits to really get comfortable in the discomfort, or as Goggins would talk about, how to become uncommon. And Mark, in this world where we enjoy such comfort, everything in real time, food comes to the door. There's all the movies in the universe on our laptops in a world where it is all so easy. David Goggins comes to us and helps us not to press the snooze button, not to walk away from the last rep at the gym, not to walk away from the idea of having to run those kilometers or miles. David Goggins comes back in 2023 to wake us up and to make us aware that there is something so much bigger in life than hitting the snooze button. Oh, what an introduction, Mike. I think the only way, the only build, the only direction that we can go from that perfect setup for this brand new show, number 212, is actually to hear from the author, the legend himself, Mr. David Goggins, introducing us to this brand new book of his called Never Finished. Proud of a lot of my accomplishments, but I am damn proud of this. Never finished, unshackle your mind, and win the war within. When I do my books and I finish them, I give them to one person to read, and when you read Can't Hurt Me, it became his favorite book. So I gave him Never Finished. He was like, you know, most people's second books aren't as good as the first. I knew when I gave it to him that he would change his mind about that bullshit. So when he gave it back to me, he goes, how the hell did you do it again, man? This book is truly amazing. He goes, how do you write books that are so inspirational to people? I said, well, my suffering has purpose. And, you know, trying to find your best self is not a straight line. You know, there's not a certain number of steps. Whenever life puts me in a dark hole, I don't sit there and wallow in it. I study it. And when I was born, I realized that my DNA wasn't enough to take me to my destiny. So I had to learn how to maximize minimal potential. And if you read this book, I guarantee you, you will unshackle your mind and you'll win the war within. So we also have a clean edition here. The clean edition has clean edition on top for those who don't like cussing. The audio book is on Audible. The audio book is one of the best audio books you ever heard. Three hours of extra content. There's stuff in there that I'll never want to hear again because it goes so deep. And I'm telling you right now, this will be one of the best books you ever read in your life. Stay hard. Stay hard. I mean, he is, 
he is helping us unshackle our mind in this new book. And I think this is the important thing, mate. He really does embark on attempts to do the impossible, to run further, to do hell week more times than any other, to qualify for all the special forces in the world when there has been nobody Nobody else has actually done that. Mm. But the important thing is in this book, he starts to reveal why. He starts to reveal how you can do it too. And I think this is a really important thing. Goggins has some haters out there. And I think that the the way to perceive, read, ingest, digest his thinking, his work, his books, is to go about this with a what can I learn from him? Because that's why he's doing it. That's why he shares such practical tips and processes and habits to do it. I think this is all about the idea of discovering that you have so much more potential than you realize. And it is only through the pursuit of challenge and hardship that you will discover that. If you do not choose to get uncomfortable, the greatest mystery in the world will be how great you could have been because until you get this, you know, discomfort, challenge, hardship, until you go and face your fears, you'll never have a clue how much potential you have. You're going to be sleepwalking through life. This book in combination with can't hurt me. His first book are the ultimate one, two punch They give you the tools, the thinking, the philosophies, the perspective. And what that results in is it is a wake-up call. And I think Mm -hmm. the big thing we're seeing here, Mark, is this is no longer like what the first book was, which is crazy story of an amazing feat. Here's some tips on how he did it. What we're hearing in Never Finished is a broader set of thinking and philosophy on how this is more than just the one challenge. It is making your life about challenge. And this is super rare ground. Few people knowingly and willingly enter this space. Goggins is giving us the ticket to get there, Mark. It is crazy. It's exciting. How are you sort of digesting this kind of next level that it's not just about the one-off event. It's about a lifetime of challenge, of getting uncomfortable. How, is it, how are the cogs turning in this new year with this new book from David Goggins for you, Mark? Well, as I reflect on Can't Hurt Me, his, his first book, uh, how, where he tells those stories of completing elite training, the only man in history to complete elite training in uh, the Navy SEALs, uh, the US Army, as well as the Air Force, that mental toughness, the self-discipline and the hard work that he put into accomplishing those feats. It reminds me of Brené Brown, who encourages us to go out and enter the arena. But what I think Goggins is demonstrating within Never Finished is you don't finish and stop when you get in the arena. Mm. You've got to stay in it. And that takes hard work as well. It's a bit like uh, James Clear in Atomic Habits. He's like... This is just not having a set of habits, you know, for the classic 30 or 60 days to to build a habit. He's like, oh no, it's a lifestyle. It's similar, isn't it? Yeah, it it absolutely is. And the difference that I think we can see from Can't Hurt Me, where he reflects on that elite training, we've obviously dug into David Goggins breaking the world pull-up record where he did 4,000 as a world record and it took him three times in order to try and actually accomplish it because of the physical, uh, I suppose, endurance, as well as his mental ability to really stay true and, and continue doing that. I think never finished is a great reminder that you need to stay the course. Similar to James Clear, as you were just saying, if you can create a habit that you revisit every single day, and it's physical. Maybe it's getting up at the same time of morning. Maybe it's learning something new where I think Goggins is building us into and making a, a case for is that that is how you live every day of your life. It is the journey towards any glass ceiling. You continually yeah. focus and, and seek out maybe those obstacles or just staying true to the growth mindset that Carol Dweck would tell us. It's all about being 
focused in just continuing down a path of being that best version of yourself, but you can only do that through uh, perseverance. And what I love about that first clip we heard, David Goggins said, finding your best self is not a straight line. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it is like we're at war with comfort. We're at a war with self-doubt. We're at a war with, oh, oh, I'm done. We're at, it, what he's really proposing is, is a constant war against our genetic desire to survive, which means don't push yourself through your barriers. Mm. Stay safe. Stay out of harm's way. And he's saying that the, the price you pay for that is mediocrity compared mm. to what you could be. Absolutely. And, and as we heard again in that first clip, the DNA your DNA doesn't take you to your destiny. And, and I think Goggins is a personal, uh, you know, personification of that. He was a depressed, overweight young man yeah. who got told he could never enter the army. What did he do? Well, he's the only man in history to do <laughs> SEALs, the army and the air force eventually. And that's not his DNA. That's his mental drive, resilience, yes. focus. And he talks about like the way you do that is, is through your, your inner savage. And I tell you what, I think the moonshots, uh, members are really tapping into their inner savage. Mike, do you realize that we have over 10 members who have actually been with us for over a year, Mark? I mean, those guys are savages. Should we not tip- be tipping our hat to them? I think we've got to tip not just our hats, but also I'm going to dust off the trumpet and make a good case for our annual uh, members, <laughs> including Bob, John, Terry, Marjolin, Ken, Dietmar, Marjan, Connor, Yasmin, Lisa, and Sid. Mike, I mean, that's a whole list of people that just keeps on growing and we couldn't be more thankful for you guys for your continued support. Mm. But that doesn't include the people who are short on the heels of those individuals of our annual memberships, including Mr. Bonjour, Paul, Kalman, David, Joe, Crystal, Ivo, and Christian, Samuela, Kelly, Barbara, and Andre, Matthew, Eric, Abby, and Chris, Deborah, Lassie, Steve, Craig, Javier, Daniel, Andrew, and Ravi, Yvette, LGV, Karen, Raul, PJ, and Nikuara, Ola, Ingram, Dirk and Emily, Harry, Karthik, Venkata, Vinpara, Sundus, as well as our brand new members, Jet, Pablo, and Roger. Whew, Mike, it just keeps on growing, doesn't it, that list? Mate, too good, too good. We are super grateful for those savage members. And um, look, for them, we have this next clip, and this is Productivity Game, one of our favorite uh, YouTube channels, breaking down this brand new book from David Goggins, Never Finished, and talking about how you can awaken your inner savage. David Goggins is a retired Navy SEAL who's known for his incredible drive and mental toughness. But after the success of his last book, Can't Hurt Me, which chronicled his difficult upbringing and feats of endurance, like completing an ultra marathon in Death Valley, he started coasting through life and stopped challenging himself. In the book, he says, When life stops kicking you in the teeth and serves you a big bowl of praise pudding, it's easy to feel that you are the man, especially if that level of respect was hard-earned. But praise, whether it comes from your superiors, your family, or anyone else, has a downside. It can soothe your inner savage and keep you from feeling the need to grind. Each of us has an inner savage who hungers for new challenges. As Goggins rested on his laurels and soothed his inner savage to sleep, Excuses like a busy schedule, family commitments, and health concerns convinced him to stop striving and growing. Devoid of any daily growth, Goggins slowly lost self-respect. Because as he says, respect is earned every day by waking up early, challenging yourself with new dreams, and embracing the suck like you have nothing and have never done a damn thing in your life. So if you're feeling satisfied after a period of hard work and are starting to take it easy, it's time to reignite your drive and wake up your inner savage with a challenge that will explore your limits. Late one evening, Goggins received an email from a friend who wanted to see if he could run the Leadville Trail 100 race to raise money for his charity. The Leadville Trail 100 is a 100-mile foot race in the Colorado Rockies that starts at 10,000 feet above sea level and includes 15,000 feet of elevation change. Goggins would have leapt at the opportunity to run Leadville a few years ago, but now he was full of hesitancy and excuses. He says, after decades of hard charging, I was stuck in neutral, nowhere close to the mental beast I'd once been. But Guggins couldn't get Leadville out of his head. The challenge haunted him because deep down, he knew it was what he needed to awaken his inner savage, get out of neutral, 
and get back on the path of self-discovery. Your wake-up challenge need not be physical. It might be intellectual, like obtaining a difficult career certification, or competing in a competition, or launching a new product. Regardless of what your wake-up challenge is, it must meet two criteria. First, your wake-up challenge must be a fear pod, something you're nervous to commit to. But once you do, the seeds of confidence and self-discovery scatter along your path. Taking this path will make you a more self-assured and self-aware person. And second, your wake-up challenge must require daily effort. Goggins didn't take a day off training for Leadville. Even on rest days, he visualized sections of the race to prepare his mind and body for the challenge. Mike, there is so much in that clip from Productivity Game. <laughs> it's like the book in, in, in two minutes, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think that that breakdown has really made the case for when we were setting up the, uh, the book at the start of this show. And I really want to dig into a couple of these key messages and insights that productivity game is calling out. Obviously it's orientated around this idea of the inner savage. And what I think is quite interesting is how much David Goggins, as we heard in that clip, was able to sit back after the success of his book. And even though you and I, and maybe our listeners, we may not be, uh, best-selling authors who have sat at the top of, uh, the Times New York list, such as David Goggins, and gone on to shows such as Joe Rogan, et cetera, and been successful in the public eye. I think all of us have probably experienced moments when we've accomplished something great and we look back and we're proud. And it's very easy to then take your foot off the gas, isn't it? Right. That project or that piece of work, that accomplishment has been finished. Maybe my marathon has been run. My swim has been completed. Great. Now I'm going to relax. When you start to do that, similar to what we were hearing from, from Productivity Games of our David Goggins, is this savage or this idea of growth mindset then still requiring some fire. It still requires fuel and it's always going to be there. When you start to relax, I, for me at least, I start to maybe get a little bit comfortable because mm. that's the path of least resistance. I start to lean into the idea of, oh, it's m- much like a holiday, taking some time off, recharging the batteries. That's all very, very good. But what happens is when you then are faced with a new challenge and one day you go back to work or one day you've got a marathon suddenly the next week, you think, oh, I'm kind of enjoying this easy lifestyle, maybe a bit too much. And the shift in focus a shift in mindset from one of rest and relaxation into, right, I'm going to go out and challenge myself again. That can be quite a jump, can't it? The changing the rails of your mindset takes a little bit of time. And I think Goggins is really calling out to us to say, well, never take your foot off the gas completely. You always need to maintain momentum. And it means it'll be that much easier to get it going again. What are you hearing from Productivity Game there? Uh, well, I mean, I'm just marveling as I did when I was reading the book, I was marveling at the fact that David Goggins was invited to an ultra marathon of which he has run over 60. Okay. He gets an email saying, Hey, could you come and run this, um, this ultra raise some money for a charity under normal circumstances, the savage of David Goggins would have said, I'm in, but Mm. he, After all his success, the book is published, he received the email, and he was full of doubt. He was full of excuses, Mark. Can you believe that? The man who, uh, you know, we've made the case for uh, with episode uh, 94, Mike, with Can't Hurt Me, the self-discipline, the mental toughness, he's then himself being able to think, oh, I want to take some time off. I'm not sure whether I want to do Leadville 100. Yeah. Isn't it interesting? A man so driven equally was similar to how, <laughs> you know, my mindset might be. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, let's build on that. If the hardest man on the planet got a little bit soft due to some success. What does it mean for the rest of us? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the, the key uh, insight, which I think is quite interesting, is how David is calling out and reminding us that life is full of distractions. 
And in this case, distraction can be success. Yeah. Which is, I think, a bit of a change or a paradigm shift a little bit because we're all looking towards success. But actually, at the end of the day, what David is making the case for is success, i.e. best-selling book, completing a race, whatever it might be, in fact, can be detrimental as well. So if you can ensure that you don't become too distracted by success and equally you don't therefore rest on your laurels and stop pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone and instead you are only within your limits and therefore you're not really growing, you're not going to discover that best self. You're not going to really understand what you're capable of, are you? Exactly. So um, I think this is really it. This is the heart of this book right here, right now. And that is just because you have done something remarkable once, this does not give you permission to check out. Mm. Mm. In fact, what Goggins is saying is we all are designed by our, our DNA, if you will, to resort to comfort, the easy path. Why? Because our body wants to survive. Mm. Now, if you know about this, then you are able to hold yourself accountable to never being finished, as he says in the title of the book, or alternatively, as he says, to not find yourself in a situation where you are not being the best version of yourself, where you're actually. Ah, I did a thing. I'm good. Right. Mm. What's the classic thing we hear of so much in life? Family and friends who retire start to suffer really poor health and mental attitudes. Why? Because they have lost a reason to live a challenge that gets them uncomfortable. Goggins is saying to us, you are never, ever finished. You should always be looking to improve, to grow. Perfection is impossible. So that means you should never give up. You should always be in search of that because it's what keeps you alive. It keeps the world in high fidelity. You'll see everything in HD, 4K. Mm. Otherwise, we're sleeping zombies. This is the choice, savage or a zombie. I think it comes comes down to that, right? I think you're right. I think you're right. And those two key tips that we heard from Productivity Game in terms of how to awaken that savage with the fear pods. So focusing on things that can give you um, the opportunity to experience something that maybe you're uh, afraid of, or you really don't want to do, which then in turn enables your confidence to grow. It being a daily effort is again, calling back to, as you pointed out earlier, Mike, James Clear, Atomic Habits. It's reminding us that we should be seeking out, much like any sort of growth mindset, this on a daily basis basis. And it's up to us how we want to, how we want to do that. Nobody else can force us into doing it, can they? It's up to you and I, as well as all of our listeners and members to seek out opportunities each day to see a challenge, see it as a, an opportunity rather than an obstacle that you want to avoid or ignore and instead build on the confidence that, you know, embracing your fears and getting over them can reveal to you. So I think he's really making once again, similar to can't hurt me now, uh, can't hurt me is the possibility to push beyond our capabilities that we might think we have already reached, but in truth, we're only just scratching the surface of. So let's imagine that we are trying to convince someone of this idea that you're never finished, why you should get uncomfortable, why you need to go to that inner savage. All right. You're with me, Matt? I'm with you. I'm okay. here. Okay. So let's imagine we're building the argument of why you should choose this path over a, a path of comfort. Mm-hmm. So here's the framework. You could be a savage or a zombie. If you are a zombie, right? If you don't challenge yourself, if you don't search new things, if you don't make yourself a bit uncomfortable, Mark, what what are some of the the negative things that start to happen when you live a life like that? Well, I think it becomes quite demotivating. You know, I think the obvious one would be it becomes a bit boring. Boring for sure. You probably don't meet too many new people either, right? Because you're just doing the same old thing, right? It's the same old thing. And what happens as we've all experienced when you're just doing the same thing day in, day out, well, it becomes a little bit 
of a drag. Right. It, you're not being challenged. And what happens is it's then harder to wake up in the morning, to motivate yourself, to get out of bed, to Mate, go out and do. The snooze so, button is your best friend, I think. Because you know what the day's got in store. Yeah. You know what those challenges, if any, are going to be. So you're constantly, I, f- I think, putting it off yeah. and you're delaying it. So think about this. I would never have ever known that I could run a marathon. Mm. But one of my friends said, come on, let's run a marathon together. And I signed up for it. And, oh, my gosh, if you had said to me a year, six months before I ran the marathon, Mike, you're going to run a marathon. I would be like, you're mm. crazy. That sounds impossible. It is amazing what potential is within us, but the catch is we often are not aware of how much potential we actually have. And you need to actually go do stuff in order to realize, huh, I can actually do that. And Mark, let's now go on the on the pros of this, of choosing the savage over the over the zombie. If you search out discomfort and challenge, if you are never finished, I believe you are meeting lots of interesting people, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? What are the other benefits of, the, of that life? For me, it's, it's real confidence, yeah. you know, similar to your marathon experience. If you'd asked me this time last year, prior to joining um, and completing and taking part in, you know, ocean swims, I certainly would never have imagined myself getting in the water, not only every week, but almost every day and being exposed to the cold, but also the level of distance and the depth. And what that's enabled me to do, as we've spoken about in previous shows, is build my own confidence when I'm in other situations. Mm. Mm. So the knock-on effect, the compound interest of being exposed to and embracing and trying out things that you've never really done before, similar to happiness being a muscle that you can train, I think exploration and curiosity is also something that you can build on and train. Oh, yeah. And, And that um, exposure to new things then builds a life that's just a little bit more fun, isn't it? It really is. So, so de- seeking daily habits that challenge you, huge way to uncover your potential. And if you do this constantly, you'll never be finished. You will always be growing. And I think we sold a lot of upsides there. I tell you what, a great daily habit could be visiting moonshots.io and clicking around not only all the content mark, but you could also become a member. You could, there is actually a members button there, isn't there, Mark? There is for those who want to find out more and dig into the Moonshots learning out loud methodology, pop on over to moonshots.io. Not only can you uh, listen to, read, as well as download all of our shows and episodes 212, you can also right at the top of the page, become a member. And we have so many members that join us every single week who all not only are supporting the show as we explore and learn from the greatest people around the world, they also get access to a brand new and uh, exclusive set of shows that enable you and I, as well as our members to dig into habits Uh, frameworks, uh, business ideas, as well as themes that really surface throughout all of our Moonshot shows. And it gives us the possibility to dive in a lot deeper. So Mike, I mean, you and I, we've done creativity, wisdom of the Stoics, goals. Oh my gosh. Lean startup. I mean, the list goes on. We've done 19 shows already and that just keeps on growing. So there you go. Head over to moonshots.io, become a member, support the show, get access to the Moonshots Master Series. It's an entirely new podcast right there. And we do a lot of things. We we even featured a lot of David Goggins on the Growth Mindset uh, episode. So check it out. So now you know we've made this case for the savage over the zombie. Well, now you're probably saying to yourself, well, okay, how do we get going on this? What are some techniques? And are there some new techniques that build upon the work of David Goggins in Can't Hurt Me? And the answer is yes. And it is all about a brand new technique. It's called self-talk audits. Once you identify and commit to a wake-up challenge, get in the habit of performing self-talk audits. Not long after ramping up his training for Leadville, Goggins' body ached and he kept telling himself he needed a day off. So he sat down on his couch, grabbed a voice recorder, and whined into the microphone. 
He recorded exactly what he was feeling and made a solid case for a much needed rest day. But when he played it back to himself, he wasn't convinced. The excuses he heard lacked substance and were just a desperate plea to quit and seek comfort. In the book, he says, My inner crybaby was suddenly the emperor with no clothes, buck naked in the light of day. He was impossible to ignore and even harder to stomach. After listening to the recording, I was off the couch and out on the road in a matter of seconds. When you wake up tired and not eager to get after it, complain about the things you dread doing into a voice recording app on your phone, then play it back to yourself. Odds are, you'll find the voice on the other side is not someone you want to be directing your life. Goggin says, The way we speak to ourselves in moments of doubt is crucial, because our words become actions, and our actions build habits that can coat our minds and bodies with the plaque of ambivalence, hesitancy, and passivity, and separate us from our own lives. After you listen to yourself whine about the things you don't want to do, hit record again, but this time pretend you are motivating a friend to get them through a challenge. Mike, this is a really interesting idea and technique that I think we should really try and lean into and discuss. For me, I love this idea. This is really exposing a weakness that you might have. Mm. It's really uncomfortable. I think it would be challenging for me to pick up my voice recorder and nail it in the first time. But I can imagine picking up the phone, recording it for maybe a couple of minutes and getting a huge amount of value from doing so. Oh. <laughs> Bec- because there are so many times, whether it's poor weather, maybe it's a bit cold, maybe it's a bit rainy, or maybe there's just something in my calendar that I just don't want to do because it's going to be stressful, uncomfortable. If I write it down or if I say it out loud, it might be something that I don't want to do. So my gut instinct tells me, "Uh uh-uh, this is not a tip I want to follow. But I think it would be so incredibly valuable because you can see and hear those weaknesses. And when you're reminded that this is a man who's challenging himself to go back out into the arena, somebody who was not resting on his laurels and goes out and completes another Leadville 100, another ultra endurance race, I'm filled with motivation to think, well, if it works for him, it'll work for me. And by hearing my own voice, maybe complaining, maybe whining, and then I hear the individuals that we study on the, on the Moonshot show, and I think, well, they're not whining. They're getting up in the morning to go out and do it. <laughs> it it's, it's motivating me to, to go out and give it a go. Well, how, how are you hearing that? Very, very practical, valuable tip. Oh, my gosh. Like... Where do we start? Like Mark, the reality here, the reality here is this is a technique that can go and deal with one of the greatest challenges we face, yet we so rarely actually work on. And that mm. is inner voice, inner dialogue. If you think about Mark, the inner conversation that you have with yourself every single day, nobody else hears it. So nobody else can call you out on it. Right. So it's incredibly hard. Self-accountability is really hard. That's why they talk about having mastermind groups, coaches, mentors, bosses, because we all need someone to keep us a little honest, don't we? Absolutely. Right. Okay. So here's the thing though. (laughs) Here's the thing though, is that, you know, if you're thinking of quitting or, or hitting snooze, it's not like your friend or partner can say, I heard you thinking that, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're just having that inside of your mind. What Goggins is giving us is this insanely practical tip, but yet so powerful to take your inner dialogue and whinge and moan and cry into your phone and then play it back to yourself. If you're thinking about not running today, oh, I don't want to run today because it's hard (laughs) and my back hurts, play it back to yourself. And then what this does is it separates you a little bit from that inner dialogue and helps you go, oh, my God, would you just listen to myself there? I sound (laughs) terrible, right? Mark, I think this is so good because we, we can hide the inner dialogue 
sometimes our entire life. I mean, we've talked a lot about the power of journaling, um, but this is like taking things to another level, getting after that discomfort of, yep, I am going to record myself moaning, griping, complaining, and then I'm going to listen back to it. Mm. And I think just hearing it back and creating that detachment from it makes you go, oh my gosh, what was I thinking, right? And I think this is great. I mean, how many times have you really written out your inner dialogue? How many times have you spoken and recorded your inner dialogue? Yet it's driving all of our behaviors. This is the, as you called out earlier, it's the biggest challenge we all have. Mm. The motivation or the voice that demotivates you is your own. We are in control of how we react to situations, to obstacles. We are in control of our mindset when we see a challenge as an opportunity, more so than something that forces us to stay in bed. Oh, is it raining outside? Great. That's fun. It's fun running in the rain. Let's get out there. Or, nah, it's a bit wet. I don't want to get soggy. I can't be bothered. Maybe I'll choose another day. It's just a very simple tone of voice, Mm -hmm. but it can make all the difference. And fundamentally what I've, I've experienced when I have pushed myself and tried to motivate myself to do something that, you know, on paper doesn't sound like much fun. More often than not, it is always much more fun. And by fun, I mean, enjoyable Mm. and valuable either from a professional or just from a simple happiness mindset, comfort perspective than I initially thought that inner voice is always the thing that puts us off and it really shouldn't because we are being controlled by this voice that fundamentally is part of ourselves, but we just don't want to, we don't want it to get in the way, do we? No. And I mean, we've talked about journaling as a way to get the inner voice out, to get your thinking clear. I think the self-talk audits, I mean, how brilliant is this? Not only has David Goggins done remarkable things, he's now providing us really simple tools to go do it ourselves. I mean, I, and I think the this putting your self-talk audits right out there, sharing that inner dialogue and getting it out of yourself is already a win, but then listening it to it back, reviewing it back and hearing what you actually sound like. Oh. It's a bit like seeing photos of yourself at a party and going, geez, I, how much did I drink at that? <laughs> it's a bit like that, isn't it? It's a bit uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, I think, is is the is the key word there, isn't it? Yeah. This is a man, David Goggins is a man who just keeps on proving, a little bit like Yoko Willink, keeps on proving the case for us to expose ourselves to these challenges, to, to lean into those moments of discomfort and fundamentally challenge what I think Daniel Pink Uh, brought to us in The Power of Regret, which is this idea where you look back at your life and think, I wish I had done this. I wish I hadn't put off that. David Goggins is a man that when he's done, when he nearly is finished, he'll be able to look back at his life and think, I never stopped and I kept on pushing. And that was a life well lived. So a great exercise if we want to do self-talk audits is what I would recommend for you and myself, Mark, and all of our listeners and members is to have a look at something that you would really like to put on your bucket list, Mm. which is not just entertaining and easy and comfortable, but is challenging. Let's say it is to hike a mountain, to do a big run, uh, to go kayaking, uh, something challenging, write a book even. I want you to think about that. And I want you to pick up your phone and record a memo and explain the reasons why you have not done it, why you have not booked it, why you haven't started it. Mm. And to hear back this recording of, yeah, I'm first, I'm waiting to do this and then I'm going to get that done. And then I'm going to wait for the perfect weather (laughs) in that moment at 1144 at that precise moment, when the dog is asleep on the couch, (laughs) I'm going for the run. Yeah, (laughs) And you're going to go, what the hell? (laughs) Well, the truth is those perfect conditions, they never come today. So if you put it off today, 
You're only making the excuse to put it off again tomorrow. And there you go. Self-talk audit done. Well, I'll tell you what else uh, you can get done is you can lean into friction. And uh, one of our favorite YouTubers, Andrew Huberman, who is like science medicine guru par excellence, he's talking with Chris Williamson in this next clip, and they are discussing um, not only David Goggins, but how he really ticks works and what we can learn from him. So let's jump into this. This one's a longer clip, but it's really good because this is our opportunity to really study the individual David Goggins and ask ourselves, what can we learn from them and how can we do it too? You had David Goggins in the lab to study him for fear. What did you learn from looking at that guy? Yeah, David's, a, David's great. I always chuckle with David because, you know, the one thing about David is what you see on social media is actually what you get when you interact with David. We worked long hours one day and I was, everyone was ready to tap out. This was a bunch of people in uh, Silicon Valley for a day, you know, doing some workshop type thing. And he just, he was changing into his running shorts midway. He was going to run to the airport and he ran to the airport as far as I know. To I get his flight. I believe so. You know, <laughs> um, but there was this moment of, should we continue? Should we take a break? And he was like, no, let's keep going. Keep going. Um, everything you see and read and hear about David is exactly how he shows up. It's really wonderful. Um, he came to the lab and he did, you know, we have a virtual version of the shark thing, um, which of course is not the same as the real experience, but for people who are afraid of sharks, it's quite scary for them and allows us to study fear. David was, he's very afraid of sharks, which was sort of uh, amusing to me given that as a seal, he had to spend a lot of time in water, but, uh, he was first one in, wanted to do the VR, talked about how he didn't like it, but, um, but that's why he did it, you know, constant, uh, testing himself. In fact, I think even though David's quite successful, I think, and has many, many options of how to spend his time. I believe this is correct. I think right now he's doing fire jumping. He's, um, fighting fires in the wilderness by zip lining in or fast lining in or jumping out of planes. So he's constantly pushing that, uh, that friction lever to create, or build or further build this thing about leaning into friction. And this is a term that isn't really scientific, but that I decided to coin because this idea of limbic friction, that when we're very tired and we need to be in action or when we're very stressed and we need to perform in a more calm and controlled way, there's friction on both sides. Getting out of bed when we're exhausted, hard, very hard often. Leaning into action in a calm and deliberate way when we're freaking out, like going to give a public lecture if one has fear of public speaking. Also hard. So this limbic friction and David just seems to seek what I call limbic friction in every domain of life. Is that like exposure therapy for limbic friction then? Essentially, yeah. I mean, what you're training and improving when you're getting better at dealing with stress is this ability to tolerate high amounts of adrenaline in your body and to think clearly and function well. I mean, adrenaline is epinephrine and just a little bit of physiology. It's released from the adrenals, obviously, above the kidneys. That gets your body organs amped up and energized. It can't cross the so-called blood-brain barrier. You have a high-restriction fence that we call the blood-brain barrier around the brain. Keep bad molecules out. Adrenaline, therefore, is released also within the brain from a little cluster of neurons called locus ceruleus. The name doesn't matter. So when you are stressed, your brain and your body both wake up and that adrenaline hijacks certain systems, narrows your visual focus, et cetera, et cetera. If you look at almost all stress inoculation protocols, cold water, ice bath, cold shower, cyclic hyperventilation, those all do the same thing. They generate a lot of adrenaline release in the brain and a lot of adrenaline release in the body. But it's different if those, if the adrenaline in the brain and body is evoked by you, that you did it. Because under conditions under which you did the ice bath deliberately and now you're wide awake and really, really alert, there's this feeling that you have options. It wasn't done to you, but you can train up an ability to, for instance, think clearly and calmly. Um, maybe even do some simple math problems in your head or maybe try and relax while there's all this adrenaline in your system. And that carries over so that when you, you know, we've all done it, you're driving along the person in front of you stop short and you're almost in the accident, right? There's that moment where you could panic or that moment where you could, you know, road rage or that moment where you could freak out. But if you are familiar with the feeling of adrenaline in your brain and body, 
you navigate that in a, in a calmer way. How? Well, because adrenaline is generic. There's no adrenaline for the car crash, adrenaline for the heights, adrenaline for the, the, uh, the relationship situation. It's all the same. So we can get better. We can raise our stress threshold as I like to refer to it. And that can be done through cold water or cyclic hyperventilation, ideally not at the same time, but cold water, you know, is a universal stimulus for creating adrenaline release. And there's a big range of cold, not infinite, but a big range of cold in which you can generate adrenaline without harming your tissue. Whereas with heat, you get into a very hot environment or very low oxygen environment. You'll also get a lot of adrenaline, but you can also suffocate and burn yourself. So this is why cold is used in Navy SEAL screening and training. And this is why I think so many people really like the ice bath and cold showers it has a bunch of other positive effects, but it is a great trigger for adrenaline. Limbic friction and getting familiar with leaning into it. Mike, I mean, this is a great physical, but also mental uh, conscious activity mm-hmm. and approach or action that we could, we can all utilize daily mm. with building our resilience as well as our familiarity with our levels of adrenaline, AKA um, stress. I mean, what are you, what are you hearing straight away from that great, frankly, uh, fascinating (laughs) clip from Andrew Huber. I could have listened to that all day. (laughs) Well, it sounds like we need to do a show on Mr. Huberman. I I think we will. (laughs) Um, Look, I think they mentioned, I'm going to pick up on the habits there, cold showers, um, you know, running to the airport after you're finished. Uh, you'll remember, um, I'm, I'm quite the fan of, uh, walking or running, to the office and taking a shower before starting work. Mm -hmm. These are all things you can do um, that are actually quite manageable uh, in your day to get friction in your life. Um, For example, I negotiate and and, uh, argue with my son about cold showers. He likes to go from warm to cold because of the science of that it's technically better. What I just like about going straight in, in the morning, cold shower, is how uncomfortable I am before I get on. <laughs> like it's really like uh, it's okay at the moment because it's summer here in the uh, uh, fair shores of Australia, but in the winter time, Mark, the uh, the emotions I go through to get myself under that icy cold mm. water that does me so much good. It's just bam, wake the hell up, Mike, get uncomfortable, and do you know what? You have that shower for a minute or two, you turn it off, and within moments, you feel fantastic. Mm. Like I wish everything that was hard had such an immediate positive uh, (laughs) post-experience. But, I mean, really what we're starting to see is there's a real science. It's almost like um, it reminds me of the show we did on – Taleb, who talked about being anti-fragile. Do you remember that one? Yes, absolutely. The idea of uh, not necessarily thinking you are um, fragile and you can break, but instead leaning into and remembering that you can create uh, resilience around yourself. And what I can hear from, you know, what you were just saying there, Mike, and when I reflect on the idea of how I deal with for example, cold showers is remember that everything is temporary. Mm -hmm. So even though I have a high level of stress, let's, let's continue with the, with the cold water Mm -hmm. um, experience, actually, if I'm, and I've, I've been doing the same as you, you know, getting under the cold shower and that's been great for me in building more um, mental, specifically mental resilience when I go out and, and do some, some open water swimming, because then I'm more used to the, the unpleasantness of the cold. But actually what it has taught me when it, I step away from the water and think about how I can deal with stress is I am now better at remembering that I will not always be under that cold shower. <laughs> that cold shower has an end to it. <laughs> and it's a great reminder as the the first thing that you you probably do in the morning after you've exercised, get under that cold shower is remember whatever I encountered today, there will be an end to it. I will find the solution. I'll ask for help or fundamentally I'll just solve the problem. Mm. And it doesn't feel as, as impossible as, as it once did, does it? 
Well, it's the exactly the same in your mind as your your physical muscles that you know when you go and work out or run a long distance and your muscles hurt the next day. That is the fact. What is actually happening there is you have actually it's a type of tearing of the muscle, a breaking mm-hmm. of the muscle when you lift those weights. And the pain that you have the day after is the muscle growing back. But this is what is a scientific fact. They grow back bigger and stronger. So surely if that's what's happening in the physical body, then that is also what is happening in the mind Mm. and the relationship between your mind and body, your inner dialogue. This is why you need the self-talk audits because it is your mind that says, hey, don't go for a walk. Even though your legs might be hurting, then it's technically not shouting at you, Mark, don't run today. But your mm. mind certainly is. So you have to get everything strengthened, hardened, robust enough. And that is why this philosophy of never finished is so important because even David Goggins fell back into the comfy chair. Yes. And if we do that, there is missed opportunity. And that to me is the greatest upside of everything that David Goggins has to say. Mm. Push yourself daily, never be finished, and you will discover so much within. So much. I mean, what an invitation, Mark. What what an invitation. And I just want to read out uh, what Nassim Taleb had, had said about anti-fragility, Mike, because I think you're onto something here with making the connection. Anti-fragility is beyond resilience or robustness. The resist, resilient resists shock and stays the same. The anti-fragile gets better. Mm-hmm. I think that's the key message here, isn't it? The more exposure you have to something that's challenging you, the more that you can reframe it in your mind. You can get familiar with that adrenaline. You can raise your stress stress th- threshold. You get better yourself, don't you? You are not something that stays the same and you react the same every time you encounter challenge. You get better, stronger, yes. more resilient. And let me just go meta here for, for one moment. If you want proof of this library of work, this group of experts that we study and we look for the pattern within, if you want to have the evidence of why we do this, why you, Mark, and myself go deep together with all of our members and listeners every single week, here's the thing. We have a captain, Navy SEAL, ultra runner, remarkable guy, saying, hey, you must never be finished. You must get uncomfortable. Search our challenge. And then on the other hand, we have a Lebanese essayist, mathematician, risk analyst, famous author saying exactly the same thing. They have the same lesson to teach us. If that doesn't validate the idea and the approach of to always be seeking challenge, to become anti-fragile from people of two completely different worlds, one from academia, one from the military, have discovered the same big idea about self-transformation. Isn't that remarkable? Isn't it incredible that we can see those connections, Mike? Because again, Taleb, uh, we've referenced Daniel Pink today, uh, Atomic Habits, of course, by James Clear. There are so many elements and lessons that once you do start to connect all those dots, you can see that familiarity. I think what I'm really hearing from David Goggins today with Never Finished is, again, going back to that first clip we heard in today's show, the guide to self improvement and being the best version of ourself is not a straight line. You've got to interact with the work of somebody like Taleb, somebody like Daniel Pink. You can learn from an ultramarathon runner like David Goggins. There are so many lessons that we can learn from individuals out there that all ladder up towards our best version of ourselves. Isn't it fascinating? Oh, it's so good. And Mark, um, you know, whilst we've just detoured into the great work of Nassim Taleb, and found this deep connection with Mr. Goggins himself. I think we can bring it home with one last thought from David Goggins, don't you? That's right. 
listeners, members, Mike and the Moonshots family, let's hear one more time from the legend, Mr. David Goggins, closing out our show as we look towards a brand new year in 2023. Let's hear how we should all utilize a mindset that embraces the idea of drop by drop. Let's approach our goals this year with a different mindset, a surgical mindset. Now it's elementary. Our science teacher had us get a glass and put in the sink. He said, before you go to bed, turn the faucet on. Just one drip gets into that cup. And by the time you wake up, it'll be full of water. He was teaching us about volume. I didn't learn shit about volume that day. I learned about patience. All I wanted to do was turn that fucking faucet on and fill that glass up. That's not how our goals go. Our goals don't go fast like that. They go like that drip of water. But what I took from it is this. That drip of water was building that endurance in your mind. That drip of water was building that calluses in your mind. And that's what we need to have. This is a slow process. And that drip of water taught me that. Stay hard. Oh, boy, Mark. Check this out. We vastly overestimate what we can do in one day. And we massively underestimate what we can achieve in a year. Again, it's this idea of short versus long term, right? Isn't it? Whether it's getting up in the morning to go for a run in the rain, which, you know, in the long term doesn't mean anything, does it? In the short term, it feels like the worst thing ever. I think this is such a wonderful metaphor of the power of, you know, perseverance as well as patience, filling it up drop by drop, 1% better every day, just staying focused and remembering that you are in control and you just need to put in the effort, I think is such a valuable way to close out this brand new book from David Goggins, don't you think? Whew, so much uh, to learn. Uh, so much, I think this would make David happy to keep working on, one might say. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're totally right. This lesson that we're really hearing, particularly from that final clip, Mike, is patience and consistency. If the only way to achieve um, success is to put in the time as well as the effort into our efforts uh, and work to then get closer to the ultimate goal that we have in mind then we just need to start today. It's up to us when we start. So why not today? So there you have it. Um, Mark, from everything that we've discussed today, um, what what's going on the, the brand new 2023 priority list? Uh, you know what? It's the practice, the physical practice of self-talk audits. Oh my gosh. Same here. I mean, how powerful is... Very. Oh, I'm kind of cringing as I even think. I know. I, it sounds. It sounds challenging. It uh, sounds confrontational as well as uncomfortable. It does. But as we know from David Goggins, you've got to embrace that discomfort. I'm sure it'll be uncomfortable for the first day, the first week, maybe longer. But I'm sure if we ask ourselves again in a couple of months, or maybe this time next year, Mike, whether the self-talk audits helps out, I bet you will say yes. Well, here's hoping, here's hoping. The only way we will know is doing it every single day. So Mark, I want to thank you for joining me on this brand new adventure into none other than the work of Mr. David Goggins. Thank you to you and thank you to you, our listeners and to our members. We have the perfect start to a new year in the work of David Goggins, brand new book, Never Finished, which has been here at the heart of show 212. And we had a calling to awaken our inner savage. We had a calling to not leaving anything on the table, not just to do this once each day, each week, each month, but to do this year on year as a life work. And it starts with self-talk orders. Call out the whinging and the moaning. Lean into friction and work hard on this every single day. Or as David said, drop by drop. Do this and you will be able to learn out loud with us here. Do this and you will definitely be on the path to realizing your potential and maybe more. And that's what we're all about here on the Moonshots podcast. That's a wrap.